Welcome to our comprehensive bench tutorial providing tips and tricks for running optimal agarose gels. We hope you find it useful, especially for your master's thesis or publications. The tutorial will last about 5 minutes. If we look at these two gels, the left one looks perfect, whereas the right one is hard to read. To achieve the perfect gel, several parameters are important, particularly the choice of DNA ladder, the amount of DNA loaded onto the gel, the percentage of agarose in the gel, and the running time. The ladder you choose needs to cover the expected DNA bands. Theoretically, this is easy, but what if you load a lot of samples, or if the DNA fragments loaded are very different in size, for example an insert and a vector? Well then it's best to load different markers to cover the whole range. If a rough calculation of the DNA amount is possible, you can load ladders where the fragments are of a defined amount. For example, the ladder with the 100 nanogram 1000 base pair intense band indicated by the arrow. The smallest amount of DNA that can be detected with ethidium bromide is 10 nanograms. DNA amounts of up to 100 nanograms per well will result in sharp, clean bands on an ethidium bromide stain gel. If small bands are expected, it's better to load a bit more DNA, otherwise the ethidium bromide will not be able to intercalate so efficiently and the bands will be fuzzy. Where you don't know the amount of a certain fragment, you can load a dilution and estimate by visual comparison with a standard. If you're loading high quantities of DNA, as seen on the center gel image, it's almost impossible to distinguish between the bands and determine their sizes. This image is also an example of choosing the wrong marker, because it has only a few fragments which don't correspond to the sizes of the loaded fragments. Clearly the bands in the marker lane, labeled M, are higher up in the gel than the bands in the sample lanes, so they are not a lot of use when estimating the size of the sample bands. Moreover, there are only a few bands in the marker lane. A good marker should have more bands than this to cover a range of sizes. The optimal percentage of agarose gel depends on the overall size of the products generated, and it can be adjusted for resolving small fragments, for example multiplex PCR products, or large fragments. As a guide, the table shows that the smaller the fragments, the higher the percentage of agarose. For optimal results, we recommend using 1 times TAE buffer for preparation and running the gel. The DNA fragments migrate from the negative cathode to the positive anode. Short fragments run faster than long ones, and fragments in a high percentage agarose gel are slower than in a lower percentage gel. The running time is therefore determined by the agarose percentage and the fragment size. Tracking dyes help to estimate the optimal electrophoresis time and avoid running very small fragments too far or even off the gel. If very small and very large fragments are running on the same gel, look for the small fragments after a short time, then run the gel again. Otherwise, the small bands fade or become fuzzy. We recommend fluorescent staining in this case because ethidium bromide is toxic. Now let's take a look at some other common effects in electrophoresis and their causes. If bands have an uneven appearance, the so-called smiling effect, this is due to dried agarose on the comb. If the photo of the gel appears too bright, then too much ethidium bromide has been added to the gel, or the gel has not destained for long enough. One more effect can be seen in the second photo. The two dyes used are visible, and this indicates that too much dye has been used. This can be distracting when the DNA band has the same position as the dye. In the bottom photo, we can see residues in the slots. These are caused by too much salt or other contaminants in the probes. On this last slide, you can see two examples of perfect agarose gels. 
The upper one shows the gel we saw previously in slide 2. The ladder fits perfectly to the band size of interest and is clear and sharply separated. The defined band in the middle allows optimal comparison with the bands of interest. The lower example shows a ladder that's not perfectly separated for larger fragments, but it works very well for the bands of interest. The double band is clearly seen as two bands, albeit with very small size deviation. And the RNA bands on the lower end of the gel show that the samples were correctly loaded. Both gels are perfectly stained with ethidium bromide and there are no residues remaining in the slots. We hope you found this bench tutorial useful and we wish you perfect agarose gels in the future. Thank you for your attention.